In this video, I'll be talking about um, things that you must do when it's time to come to Australia. Sometimes it's very exciting. Once your visa has come through, your paperwork has come through, it can be very a very exciting time of your life. And because of that, you can find yourself forgetting the important little things that you need to do before the day that you travel, and also the things that you must do as soon as you arrive in Australia. I would like you to have this and probably, you know, think of it like a little checklist that you must uh, look through to ensure that you have these following things either planned or you've thought about these things so that, you know, uh, as soon as you uh, arrive or as you um, get out to, of your country to come over to Australia, that you think about these things because they are important and that you will need them. Thank you for being here. My name is Anna and uh, at Migrant Doctor Mum. So what's the first thing that you need to ensure that you have? Like I already said, you need to have your travel documents already good to go. So that's your, um, your visa and uh, your passport. I cannot reinforce enough, guys. It is very important to have copies of these things. One placed either in your hand luggage, one placed in your handbag and stuff like that. Always have a copy of these important documents. Don't leave them on your phone because your phone can go off. And then when it comes to you having to produce your visa, your phone is off. It's extremely, extremely frustrating. But if you have copies of these things already done, you have a copy of your passport, you have a copy of your visa, they're good to go in case. And I hope you don't lose your passport, but in case you ever lost your passport, at least you have copies with you and stuff like that. So very important to ensure that you've kept your visa and your passport where you need to safely and be ready to go. The second thing that's quite important before you move into Aussie is make sure that you have organized your insurance. So Australians, by insurance, I essentially mean your health insurance. Australians enjoy, you know, Medicare benefits, but before you get Medicare benefits and also check with your visa because some visas come already with Medicare, especially if you're moving directly as a permanent resident, you already have a bit of Medicare ready to go. But um, if you're on a work visa or a student visa or any other of the other visas, you may actually need to organize your own private health insurance. And in this, time, in this instance, uh, most student visas, you'll already have done that as part of your visa applications. But for things like work visas, they actually give you that grace enough that you can actually apply for your private insurance as soon as you, know, you plan for it for when you will arrive. In my instance, I found it a lot easier to do monthly payments because initially, obviously, you... <laughs> If you're like me, you probably have exhausted a lot of your funds already and so paying for a whole year uh, private insurance. And again, you don't know whether you like that specific cover. So it's important to put out, you know, a, a basic cover. And then once you land and you sort of have a bit of a better idea of how insurance works and that sort of thing, then you can either up your premiums or stay the way on, on what you are or change to another you know, uh, insurance depending on what you want, but very important to have this in mind as you come over. The second thing that I feel a lot of us um, don't think about is your accommodation. It's very important to think about where you're going to stay as soon as you land. Remember, it's not easy to get accommodation in Australia, and so you have to look for it way in advance. Bearing in mind the, um, the rental market in Australia at the moment is really, really something else. It's very difficult to find accommodation. You go to a house viewing and you find you're more than 50 families viewing for one single home. So very important to pre-plan in advance, know where you're going to be staying. If you are being provided for accommodation by the hospital, it's very important to think about it this way. If you're working Pivot yourself around your workplace because I'm assuming when you come in, either you won't have a car. So if you can get a place where that's next to the hospital, a walking distance to the hospital, whatever it is that you're coming to, to work at so that, you know, as, as you plan to get a car, unless obviously you've pre-planned in advance that somebody has got an extra car that you could use or you pre-planned in advance that you're going to get a rental car or something like that. These are some of the things that you need to think about when you're considering accommodation. Think about accessibility to a car, think about private uh, transport and think about you know how far it is to the important places that you'll be going to. Bearing in mind that obviously as soon as you settle in, things could change and obviously you can always reconsider. So a couple of ways that you can get um, accommodation, you can check on Airbnbs and then uh, 
and hopefully that's for a short time because it can be costly and then obviously you can uh, some people look on marketplace some people look on gumtree but just remember a lot of these places try and not do a payment before try and um, especially things like you know where you're doing it privately like marketplace and stuff like that be very cautious about um uh, giving people money before you actually, you know, see where you'll be staying and that sort of thing. So very important to think about that. You could get yourself into a motel. You could get yourself into a hotel. You could get yourself into shared accommodation and that sort of thing. If you have family and friends who are already here, you could potentially get uh, someone to host you. And the other last thing you could do is obviously get somebody to rent out a house for you in advance before you come using your, the resources that you already have. And you could also potentially get a shared accommodation before you land. So think about accommodation. And I feel like if you think about these things and you put measures in place, like obviously if you're coming with an entire family, you need to think about, you know, these things because obviously the implication is different if it's a whole household or if it's one person. So think about it and plan yourself really well because you don't want to come here and you're struggling as a family and you're struggling as an individual as well. Very, very important. The third thing that you have to think about is your airport transfers. Remember, you'll have come in with, probably if you're like me, you'll have come in with two bags of 23 kilos. You'll have come in with your hand luggage. You'll come in with a big personal bag. And probably you'd have bought extra space, maybe another suitcase uh, full of maybe 32 kilos for additional luggage. So remember, you'll be traveling quite, for lack of a better word, quite big in terms of that. So. Um, and and worse off if you're traveling as a family because every family member has two bags and you know if you're like me we had like 10 or 11 or 12 bags so you need multiple cars and stuff like that so if somebody offers to come and pick you up and they have a hatchback and you it's a whole family think about it because you know you will need to get a d extra transport whether it's an uber whether it's a, another friend whether it's a bigger car and stuff like that those are things that i see a lot of people not thinking about but because i generally overthink over things i notice that obviously some of these things can um, yeah it's important to think about them and sometimes organizing if you live in a if you're moving straight into a hotel some hotels actually provide free transport from the airport take advantage of such um, such offers some airbnbs may actually also have the same so think about such and uh, ask them way in advance instead of arriving and then asking because usually if you book them together then usually it's a more cost effective think about those things the other thing is um, uh, a way of communication so you will need um, to uh, look into getting a prepaid line so you can use your phone the phone that you're using overseas you can come with it and then probably just buy a sim and remember when you're starting life you may actually be moved into maybe a temporary accommodation before maybe the, if the hospital is providing accommodation before you get permanent accommodation or you may be hosted by someone for a week or two before you move into your own place so it's very important to try and get um, a prepaid sim that has a bit of data okay so that data would be probably i would recommend maybe 30 gbs and above that will allow you to hotspot yourself maybe onto your laptop because remember when you first come in there'll be a lot of paperwork that you'll need to apply for there will be applications that you'll need to apply and those will require data so if you are living maybe in an Airbnb that doesn't have Wi-Fi or you're living in an accommodation that doesn't have Wi-Fi, it will come in prudent because then you can use the data on your phone to be able to access and do these things that you need to do. So, yeah, and then obviously you will need your phone to make phone calls, to make follow-ups, to be in contact with the important people that you need to be in contact with. So as soon as you get here, get a SIM, load it with information i think i put out another video which i'll try put in the link where um i have actually done a whole video about how the various uh, phone uh, companies that you could go off with mm, yeah all right cool and then the other thing that you could potentially do is um uh utilize your cards like that's your banking cards to start off doing some payments um, because uh, you may not have carried enough um, 
cash and Australia being almost cashless in terms of like everywhere you go, most times either you use your phone to pay or you use your cards to pay. To pay. Some of the debit cards from overseas or some of the credit cards overseas can also be used here. So invest in or, or uh, put together, you know, look at the cards that you're using and hopefully as soon as you get here, you can apply for your... Australian, you can apply with one of the banks here, get your cards and then hopefully link them up to your phone so that you can pay as you go. So that's another thing that you need to think about. Obviously, as soon as you get here, you will also need to open a bank account. I have another video on this, so look out for it. So part of that would be applying for a bank account. Very important to do this. I always tell people as soon as you land the following day, go get your phone. If you're, if, that is if you arrive late. If you arrive in the morning the same day, go get a phone, uh, a SIM, and then get uh, go open a bank account. Reason being, these two things will be very helpful. The phone number will be helpful in setting up your bank account, and your bank account plus the statement that you generate from a bank account will be part of what you will use going forward as your 100 points for applying for other things that you will notice that you will need. So as soon as you arrive, make, make, make sure without fail that you get your bank account as soon as you land. A lot of the bank accounts, I think I, there's also a video on that, bank accounts, uh, banks that you can use, the commonest ones will be things like Commonwealth, things like um, uh, NZ Bank, things like West Park, things like Bankwest. So get one, a lot of them you'll start off the initial application online and then you will need to present yourself in person and present the documents, which will be either your passport, your visa, um, and a few other things that they may require to be able to open the account. Get it done nice and early, because like I said, these are important documents that you will need for applying other things, you know, like police clearance, uh, things like, you know, you're working with children check and that sort of thing. So important to get it in done nice and early. The next thing that you'll need to apply is what we call the TFN number, tax file number. This is an important thing to do because obviously you start paying tax as soon as you're in this country for tax purposes. You will, with a TFN number that will link your payments, your your pay with um, the ATO, and then obviously um, you definitely need this even uh, for your workplace and stuff like that. So get that into place. Um, the other thing is if you are moving into the regions, because some people get jobs, like let's say in the regions, let's say for example, they are um, uh, they have landed in Perth and they have a job, let's say like um, Geraldton or whatever it is. Uh, so I see some of the airports have connections directly into the regions and you can actually do that. But I see some, some people that I've seen because I've worked regional, some of my friends in the regions, what they do is they land in Perth maybe a few days before they start working um, in the regions. They look around path, they see what sort of city they're getting into. Because as soon as you land and start working, you'll probably keep working, 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 and you won't be able to sort of experience the city. So it's good to know, you know, what sort of place you're going, look at uh, the city, look around a little bit. And obviously, after that, you can try and go to the regions and see, obviously, uh, for eventually for your job. And you can either travel to the regions by flight or you can hire a car and travel to the regions with a car as well. And if you're here early enough and you buy yourself a car, again, you can use that car to travel to the regions. The other thing that I must say and I always tell people is um, driving. You know, always remember, I've seen people that have come to Australia, even after I have told them multiple times, is you need to be able to drive. Try as much as possible. As soon as you start the journey of coming to Australia, please, please, please learn how to drive. The reason why I always insist about this is the learning how to drive process in Australia is longer, it's strenuous, it's stressful. And obviously you need to be on the L, L plates, then you need to be on the P plates, the red P plates, and then eventually on the green P plates. You can easily, easily avoid that by doing what? By having some driving experience overseas. If you have this driving experience, then you come over and use that experience just to get yourself driving on the road. You can drive 
here in Australia using your overseas driver's license. And then eventually when you become a, you can continue using your overseas driver's license until when you will get your permanent residence because then at that point in time, you must and you have to get the Australian driver's license. So very important to do that. The other thing that why I always insist is some jobs will require you to have a driver's license that's unrestricted. Most of the jobs in the disability industry, in the healthcare industry, that require you to move around, drive around, will require you to have an unrestricted driver's license. So why deny yourself an opportunity to work in these better jobs by not having a driver's license? So if you can, and remember the process of coming to Australia is not an overnight process. As soon as you start thinking about it, as soon as you start putting in applications and stuff like that, you need to start learning how to drive because I feel like without wheels here in Australia, it's very difficult. Some cities like New, uh, like uh, Sydney, maybe you can get around if you live within the city, but places where the public health transport is not the greatest, and especially depending if you live in the, in the suburbs and stuff like that, you may find it moving from job to another job, you may find that you have to use one and a half hours, a place that you would normally drive for 20 minutes. Why would, why? You know, let me not ask you that. I think it's not reasonable to put yourself through such immense stress and the winters can be cold and you're catching buses and stuff like that. You'll still be able to get around, but you will struggle getting around. So very important to try and get your driver sorted nice and early so that as soon as you come here, you're just adjusting really, really quickly. The other thing that I must say is remember to carry along the important documents. If you're a parent, don't forget to carry the immunization records for your kids. If, you, if they are moving schools, don't forget to carry the educational staff along, their, their recommendation letters if you have to, your marriage certificates, and any important documents that you need. I, for, for one, I must say you will actually require to show, um, get your kids... Um, what do you call it, the vaccines updated so that, you know, <laughs> it's funny because, not funny really, but in this country, your kids cannot go to kindy without being fully vaccinated, okay? Part of the requirements for your child to join, to join kindy is you have to provide evidence that they've been fully vaccinated. Imagine if you travel to Australia without your kids' drivers, uh, not drivers, your kids' vaccination certificate. It means your poor child has to go through those vaccinations again and do catch up as well, which will take them quite a long time, about six months to do the catch up. You know, you know, this, this obviously, you know, happened to, to me because obviously I, 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 I didn't carry the kids um, vaccination booklet. So remember, very important, learn from my case, try, get your, 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 the important documents carried along with you in the past I've had to dispose of property and there it was just very easy because I had the the paperwork here with me just to quickly do and send it across so I have found I still carry along my you know my certificates for school my important documents of marriage my important documents of um, property and stuff like that people are different you can decide to live it in a bank or whatever it is but, um, you know, I, I opted to just carry them along because you never know when you will need them. The other thing that I must say that I would really like you to learn from my case is you can come in Australia and start life without buying everything new. You know, when you come to Australia, you actually, and especially for somebody that's moving with family, if you're moving alone, it's something completely different because you don't need a lot of things. You can do without a TV, you can do without... You can probably do without a freezer. You can probably do with a small fridge if you're moving alone. But if you're moving with an entire family, with kids that have to go to school, have recess lunch, and then you have to buy meat in bulk, you have to buy supplies in bulk, you definitely will need a big size a fridge, plus or minus a, 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 a freezer. You'll probably need a TV. You will probably need um, couches. You'll probably need... Um, bedding and stuff like that. So obviously that can be quite quite a costly experience. So 
if you're moving with family, obviously you need to prepare yourself really well to be able to supply for your family. All this, if you're moving alone, it can be a bit easier. But what I can just say is you can get a lot of these things at very cheap prices if you look in the right places. You don't have to dispose of large, you know, your important just for household things like I did. But anyway, what I must say is you can look at places like Marketplace, Gumtree, you know. Actually, there are some Facebook groups that actually give things for free. So you can just look in your on your Facebook, look where you live and just search on Facebook things that are being given free. You can actually get some. You can check in garage sales. A lot of the things in garage sales go at very cheap prices. On Marketplace, you can easily... I think our first... Was it our first freezer or what? No, our first freezer, I think, a friend of ours gave us. But I know there are freezers that you can buy as cheap as $50 and they will serve you, okay? And then I know um, you can buy a washing machine at around $200 that will probably serve you for years on end until when maybe you move into your house and you want to get something, you want to, you know, upgrade and stuff like that. One of our beds, you know, I think you can easily get a bed worth $50, and um, yeah, yeah. So I think some of these things you can easily, you know, get them on uh, marketplace. If you want to go the harder way, like I did, try and get everything new. Yes, you can do that. But I think looking back in retrospect, I could probably, we could probably have done things differently. We wouldn't have bought everything new. Reason being, the only reason I regret doing this is because as we came and then we had to move after a year and you know when you move you know your furniture is moved in the car like here here we had to go regional so it's a bit of a drive about five six hours and you know your furniture get destroyed and stuff like that and mark you they're all new so if you have like you know you know things that are not expensive it's not hard to dispose them and you can start life all over again if they mess them up along the travel it's not a big deal but obviously, if you've um, secured yourself a brand new fridge and, you know, brand new furniture, and obviously they get spoiled during the move, because as, when you come in Australia, remember, as a doctor, you may take time before you settle. You may have to move around a little bit before you settle and stuff like that. So remember uh, to be mindful of these things when you're, when you're planning your move. And then the last thing that I must say is um, if the other thing that you need to pr try and um, see whether it can assist you is see if you have any online support groups in Australia especially you know in Australia generally I think I think I've seen in all the states where we live there are a lot of community groups from various countries you know you will find you know the Kenyan community the Zimbabwean community the you know all these communities the Italians the Egyptians there will always be a community that you can somewhat belong to. And the reason why I always encourage people to try and find these communities is they actually help you settle in better. It's so nice when you go in a meeting and find people that you can speak Swahili with, you know, you can speak your mother tongue with. It is so good. You guys take it for granted, you may take it for granted, but for me, I think just being able to meet people that we've come from the same place, people that probably know where I was born, people that understand why I do things the way that I do, people that think in Swahili like me before they speak it out and stuff like that. It is so satisfying. And then also they can link you up with the important places where you can buy grocery, where you can find things like duma, where you can find things like fish and stuff like that. And that will be very beneficial when you're settling in. Your kids can run around with their kids and stuff like that. And you can get very, very meaningful relationships from these communities. At the moment, I have very, very good friends that I have met through such platforms and people that have been very important um, in our lives uh, up to date. So you can actually find very meaningful relationships in those um, social or community groups. I know a lot of people, as I wind up, who say it's uh, better to come alone initially as you settle because it apparently is easier and um, for you to adjust and then probably get the rest of the family. I will leave that with you guys to sort of decide because for me, 
I think uh, was a lot easier for me to settle in with the help of my family because you'll be homesick and all that. But I understand maybe as a student because obviously you're not you're not starting work immediately. My case was different because I was starting work. There was an assured income coming and um, my kids' school fees wasn't uh, as expensive. So there was a bit of my situation maybe completely different from yours. But obviously think as a family what is best for you, whether to come uh, as an individual or whether to come as a family. So this is just part of what I would like to summarize and talk about uh, as you plan to come to Australia. But obviously there are other many things that I may not have covered. Please, if there's something additional that you think I have not covered, put it down in the comments. Let's help our people even as they try to, they prepare to come and start their life in Australia. Let's help uh, so that people can start on the right footing. Otherwise, I want to wish you the very best, uh, even in this journey of settling in in Australia. And I just want to encourage you and let you know that um, it's going to be hard initially, but things, as soon as things start falling into place, you will enjoy living and working in Australia. So all the best. Thank you.